Hey everyone, my name's Tomatoinus, also known as Dongus Minimus, and this is a speedrun to get laid in Cyberpunk 2077. The idea behind this run is to start a new game, and then by using any tools at our disposal, becoming slept with in as speed as possible. Right away, we pick the easiest difficulty, even though it doesn't really play a factor in this run, and pick the Street Kid Life Path because it is the shortest intro of the three by about 7 to 10 seconds. It doesn't matter which body we pick for the run, and I pick the feminine voice because why not, and for the stats, I max out body for the extra stamina points, reflexes for the extra movement speed, and then just put the last point in cool for the fun of it. The run and timer officially start after we load into the bar where the game starts. Right away we're going to be giving ourselves a rhinoplasty, and then skipping through the dialogue with Pepe the bartender, and if you haven't seen gameplay of this game yet, then just so you're aware, the digital effect on screen is the animation for skipping lines. So, as we get underway, I'd like to address the elephant in the room. The gameplay in this video is going to be really choppy at times. It's safe to say that Cyberjunk 27 inches doesn't run particularly well at the moment, but that's not the sole reason for the recording on my run being choppy. Normally I run the game at a pretty steady 60 frames per second with all the graphical settings on high and the resolution set to 1080, but when you're streaming and recording the gameplay though, your computer's ability to encode the video and run the game don't get along well. In this run, not only am I running the game on all of the lowest settings, but I also have the resolution set to 1280x720, and even then, the game struggles to hit 60fps at times. Also, want to get this out of the way, if you're worried about spoilers, don't worry, this video only contains gameplay from the very beginning of the game. So, we just spoke with Kirk Sawyer, and he wants us to go steal a car for him. This is what gets the ball rolling on the game, and we can now exit the bar. Outside, we're going to run down an alleyway to find where our Uber driver is located, along with Padre, who is going to be carpooling with us on our trip to work. When we speak with Padre, we're going to skip most of the lines because we're running late, and then we'll get in the back of the car and begin the first cutscene of the run. So where to? The Glen. Drop me off at Embers. Front door? Take the ramp back of the bar. Show you where to stop. You heard it, Marcus. During this car ride, we really can't do anything. Padre will try to talk to us, and we can talk back if we want, but because we're speedrunners, social interactions aren't our forte, so we're just gonna chill and look out the window instead. You may be asking why I can't just press the skip button again to skip through this conversation in car ride. That's because you can't. Simple as that. You can't skip every dialogue in this intro, let alone the game. So we're at CD Projekt Red's mercy while we sit here and wait for this cutscene to play out. If you've seen my Fallout 4 run that's of a similar nature, you're likely already starting to get flashbacks of sitting and watching cutscenes for most of the run, only to then have all of the action in the final two minutes of the run. I wish I could assure you that this run will be any different. Let's just look at the bright side though. This run was over two hours long less than a week ago, and now it's just over ten minutes talk about a quick optimization. Regardless of its length now compared to a week ago, this run does still have several sizable setbacks to soaking our Slayer. Of course, this car ride is the largest one, and I'll get to the other big one near the end of the run. Right now, this dude in the next car over is pulling his big iron out at Padre. He thinks that just because he's taken out 1 in 19 more that he can add Padre as a notch on his pistol. This guy isn't really one to be taken seriously though. This is mainly because I don't think that anyone who looks this much like Bowser is a real threat. Bastion Ibarra. Looks like it's my lucky day. What do you want? To settle our biz, once and for all. Got an offer for you, Patty, so listen up. Get the fuck out of Vista. Pull your boys off the street. I'll give you the Glen. Done deal. We eventually have the ability to cut off Bowser and tell him to get bent, which we just mash F on our keyboard beforehand to make sure we do it as soon as possible. Real riveting stuff, I know. I promise this gets good soon, we just need to get through the stuff we can't fast forward through. Speaking of fast forwarding, I'm just going to speed up the video right now because I kid you not, there's over a minute left in this car ride. Oh, and by the way, if you want to watch this full speedrun with just game audio, or with the original audio from my stream VOD, there are links in the description for those. Something worth mentioning is that there's an option in this game settings for making it so that you just have to hold down the button assigned to skip lines to skip through entire dialogue sections, rather than mashing to skip lines individually. 
counterintuitively, it's actually faster to use the individual line skip for this category. While you lose a second or two overall from each line starting for a brief moment rather than skipping instantly with the other option, if you have this setting on skipping lines rather than dialogues, then right here you can skip V hopping down into this alleyway, which makes using the individual line setting about 3 seconds faster overall. So we finally arrived at the location of the car that we're going to steal for Kirk. Here we're going to ride an elevator down and give Kirk a call, and then run up to the car and initiate another string of dialogue. That dialogue will lead into another one at a different location, which then leads into a pre-rendered cutscene that we can skip. While this all goes down, let's start talking about how we're actually going to break the game. Right now, we're technically in the prologue. During the prologue, you don't have free reign over the city, and you're forced into doing the prologue quests. The city still exists around us though, like the NPCs and everything are still there. The issue is that we're stuck in the prologue areas, like in the prologue, you're limited to small play areas that are parts of the quests, and there's no way out of them. This is why the run was 2 hours a few days ago, because for the run, you'd have to play through the whole prologue before being able to sleep with someone. Like I just mentioned though, the city still exists around us during the prologue, so if we found a way outside of one of the prologue areas, we could then run to our fun buddy and end the run. And that's exactly what we're going to do. The reason why we haven't been able to leave the prologue areas yet is because we don't have access to any weapons. Once we get our hands on a weapon, then we'll be able to perform a glitch to break the game. Hello there, Night City! Stanley here with you. So, after the pre-rendered cutscene that I was able to skip, we're now going to have control of our character and have weapons. First though, we have to be careful to decline going through the combat tutorial that Jackie offers us because talk about a time loss if you say yes. Probably crawling with the pendejos that kidnapped her. Eyes and ears open, alright? Speaking of which, got you a little something. Militech training shard. In case you need to uh, brush up on your dance moves. Down for some target practice in no, VR? No, no time. Maybe later. Sure, sure. Mañana. Let's do this. Mañana. Once we get out of the car, we sprint to the nearby elevator, and in this run we got lucky and Jackie sprinted to the elevator with us. Sometimes he just doesn't do it, I can't quite figure out why. While waiting for the elevator to start, I perform the glitch that's going to break open the game. Fist gliding. Just to be clear, while in the elevator, I'm just doing it to mess around and kill time, not break the game. That will come in a moment. So to set up fist gliding, you have to have a weapon equipped in weapon slot 1, as we do with our shooty boy. You then pull out your fists and in rapid succession press 1 to swap to the weapon, 4 to swap back to the fists, and scroll down quickly. If you do it correctly, your fists will still be out, and you can spam punch which propels you in the direction you're looking. Also, it's worth mentioning that this run is performed on version 1.05 of the game, so this glitch for sure works on this patch or earlier. I'm pretty sure it only works though if you don't have any cybernetic enhancements to your arms. Once the elevator doors open, the floodgates are unleashed and we fist glide down the hallway to the door to the apartment we're raiding. The fastest way to travel with fist gliding is by running and jumping, all the while spamming attack to fist glide. Once we hack our way to inside the apartment, we scan the body that's on the operating table, which knocks out us having to perform a dialogue later. I then double back just to make sure Jackie is following us because sometimes he likes to be stubborn and mosey down the hallway like we've got all day. After skipping through a dialogue with Jackie, we then enter the combat area where we just blaze past all of the enemies to reach the balcony. I could fist glide here, but it's a little hard to control if you have to turn a lot, so I opt for just sprinting. Here I do some parkour to reach a ledge where I set up my fist glide again and fist my way up to a different ledge where I'm going to slide off the building and perform what's called a fall damage cancel to reach the street below. If you sprint and slide off of a ledge, you can survive any fall height if before you land on the desired platform, you land on a different platform first and slide off of that one onto the desired platform. In this fall damage cancel in the run, I fell onto a street sign and then continued to slide off that onto the street. The way I believe this works is that landing while sliding stores your most recent fall damage, and then that fall damage is dealt once the slide ends. So by doing our big fall, and then landing and doing a small fall as part of the same slide, then only the small fall's fall damage is dealt to us, meaning that we don't take any fall damage because the second fall is really small. Back to the run, we're now just fisting our way to get fisted. Once we got off the balcony and out of the prologue area, we're free from the game's constraints and we can go wherever we want. 
Because we're still in this prologue mission though, cars haven't spawned yet so we have to run and fist ourselves to the finish. So the reason why I couldn't just fall damage cancel off the balcony and had to fist glide up to a different ledge is because there are invisible planes that neck you if you try to jump off the balcony and we had to get far enough away to avoid them. Also, I said earlier it's fastest to jump and fist glide, but if we jump too much we run out of stamina and then we have to wait for it to recover to fist glide again, so that's why I don't jump often while running. And here we are, the run is over. Sorry, there was a lot to discuss in the final minutes of the run, so I apologize if any of those explanations were rushed. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and I'd like to say thank you to everyone who subscribed because we're about to hit 200,000 subs, which is something I never imagined possible when I started making videos. And there's me on stream trying to censor the scene by pulling up my webcam. Seriously though, thank you for all your support through the years, and I hope you're doing well. Don't forget that you're not alone, and things are never as bad as they seem. Additionally, thank you to all my Patreon supporters, you're the best, kisses to you all. This was a speedrun to become slept with in as speed as possible in Cyberpunk 2077. I've been Tomato Anus, and I hope you have an above average day.